Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Welcome to the course Analog uh, Principles of Communication System. I am Dr. Dishan Kaleem from EC Department, CUI Walk Campus. In this lecture, we will cover Chapter 4 Amplitude Modulation and Deep Modulation. And specifically, we will cover the amplitude modulation. So let's move to the lecture content. Okay, let's discuss the lecture contents. So Firstly, we will discuss what is the frequency mixer and what is the role of frequency mixer. And secondly, we will discuss amplitude modulation and how we perform amplitude modulation. And in last, we will discuss conditions for the valve detection. So let's discuss frequency mixer first. Uh, first of all, we should have an information that why we need frequency mixer. Mixer as you can see that from its name that is clear that it will mix the frequencies. But why we need to mix the frequencies? Actually this is uh, frequency mixer is usually used in a communication system to shift the uh, spectrum of a signal. So let's discuss how it shifts the spectrum of a signal. We shall analyze a frequency mixer or frequency converter used to change the carrier frequency of a modulated signal mt cos omega ct from omega c to some other frequency omega i. So it means that we have a signal for example mt cos omega ct and we would like to shift this signal from omega c frequency to the new frequency omega i or the intermediate frequency. It can be any frequency. So let's discuss how we will achieve this uh, frequency shifting using frequency mixer. So this can be done by multiplying mt cos omega ct. This is the signal which we already have by a, by a frequency by a signal to cos omega mix t. So this is the mixer frequency and this is the our current signal and we would like to shift it to the omega i. So we will do what we will do, we will multiply mt cos omega ct by cos omega 2 cos omega mix t. Where we have a value of omega mix which is equal to omega c plus omega i. Omega c is your current frequency and omega i is the next frequency where we would like to shift its spectrum. Or it can be omega mix can be omega c minus omega i. And after that, we multiply this and then we will do the band pass filtering of this product to receive the uh, desired frequency signal. It means the signal with the frequency omega i. Okay, let's see mathematically how it looks like. The product x of t is x of t is equal to 2 mt cos omega ct into cos omega mix t. So this is from here 2 cos omega mix t. Okay, and we shifted here to okay, this is 2 and this is our given signal mt cos omega ct. So we multiply. So by trigonometric uh, identities, you know that if we have a two cos terms and a, there is a two multiplied, then what should happen? It will result in mt cos omega c minus omega mix into t and two plus cos omega c plus omega mix, right? And if we select there are two cases as we discussed for omega mix. Omega mix can be either omega c plus omega i or the omega c minus omega i, right? So if we select omega mix is equal to omega c minus omega i. And let's put this omega mix into this equation, right? This equation. Okay, then x of t will look like mt is equal to, if we would put omega c minus omega i here, so omega c, there is a minus sign. So this omega c will cancel out with this omega c and in the end we would have omega i right so minus minus plus so we have on cos omega i t similarly if we put omega mixed value here so what is the value omega c minus omega i so uh, omega c plus omega c we would have a 2 omega c and then minus omega i minus omega i so this is xt is equal to mt cos omega it plus cos 2 omega c minus omega i into t. So in other case if we select the 
uh, second case which is omega mix is equal to omega c plus omega i then similarly using this equation we will get omega mt is equal to cos omega i t and here we will have a plus sign cos 2 omega c plus 2 plus omega i t so this is the uh, after multiplying mt with the two cos omega c t omega mix t we will get x of t equal to this now our desired goal is uh, uh, because this is a frequency mixture and in the start i mentioned it that we would like to achieve the frequency of a signal cos omega i t so now we need to separate this signal uh, uh, with the frequency cos omega i t so let's see how we will do this in the next slide so in either case it means we have a two cases in either case a band fast filter at the output uh, we will need the band fast filter which is tuned to frequency omega i as we, our desired frequency is omega i we will pass the term of empty cos omega i t and suppress the other term so what will this band pass filter do it will allow the frequencies empty cos omega i t but suppress the other term thus the carrier frequency has been translated to omega i from omega c in this way we shifted the frequency from omega i to the omega t the operation of frequency mixing or frequency conversion the same name frequency mixing or frequency conversion and this process is also known as heterodyning so you must remember frequency mixing frequency conversion or heterodyning these three terms are similar in meaning so is identical to the operation of modulation with the modulating carrier frequency the mixer oscillator frequency right that differs from the incoming frequency by omega i so this process is just like a modulation we have a frequency omega c and we shifted it to the another frequency omega i any one of the modulator discussed earlier can be used for frequency mixing so we discussed already we discussed the modulators in the last lectures so the same process can be used to obtain this frequency mixing as well so this is a complete block diagram which shows that uh, how this process carries on and how we separate the chip the frequency of the signal from omega ct to the omega it right now you can see that this is our input signal one and this is our final output signal f right which we, we would like to achieve so what are the steps as i already shown you mathematically in the previous slides empty cos omega ct is multiplied by two cos omega mix t or omega mix is equal to omega c plus omega i or omega c minus omega i t so when we have a multiplication or the product here so we will get the x of t and after getting this we will pass to the to the band pass filter which is tuned to frequency omega i and passing through this we will get mt cos omega i t and the cos omega c term will be ignored so how the spectrum will look like so for example this was our uh, frequency of 2 omega c and this is the terms 2 omega c plus omega i this is one term and 2 omega c minus omega i and what we would like we would like to achieve the frequency with the signal omega i t right so look at this this is our signal omega i so this signal is here right this is plotted here this thing, right so this omega i and what does this dotted line means these dotted line means that this is our filter so which is tuned to omega i this is omega i frequency and our filter is tuned to this so when we pass the signal through this we will get empty cos omega i so this is the process of frequency mixing or frequency shifting or frequency conversion or heterodyning so this is very important because in modulation you every time you shift the frequency to the other frequency so in this we have uh, we shown that how this can be achieved okay next is the amplitude modulation in amplitude modulation uh, there is a difference between double side 
band suppress carrier amplitude modulation which we discussed earlier double side band suppress carrier and this term is only for the amplitude modulation what is the main difference first we would like to uh, uh, know this one that what is the major difference between double side band suppress carrier amplitude modulation and simple amplitude modulation so the only difference is that uh, when we transmit the signal double side band suppress carrier amplitude modulated signal in this we didn't separately transmit the carrier itself whereas in amplitude modulation we shift the uh, with beside the uh, modulated signal we also independently shift the modulated signal so in this case there is no suppression of the carrier so it's like a double side band amplitude modulation as well so in general we called it it has a double side band but in general we named it as a amplitude modulation or we called it as amplitude modulation let's move forward how it works or uh, what is the major differences and what are the major benefits of adopting the amplitude modulation so double side band amplitude modulation is easy to understand in both time and frequency domain but does not have equivalent simplicity in practical implementation this is the limiting factor of the double side band suppressed carrier amplitude modulation that it is easy to understand in time and frequency domain means in representation but does not have equivalent simplicity in practical implementation why it's not simple because to detect the detection means to recover the signal which we transmitted for example we transmitted double sideband mt suppressed carrier states mt cos omega c t right this was our modulated signal which we discussed earlier in the double sideband suppressed carrier scheme uh, here you can see that our information is in the message signal which is m of t so in the on the receiver side we need to separate it from this multiplied circuit so what we do we need a receiver which uh, must accurately detect this m of t so uh, to detection of this m of t the receiver circuitry will be more complex so the coherent modulation of double sideband suppressed carrier requires the receiver to possess a carrier signal that is synchronized with the incoming carrier so the reason is that coherent means uh, the frequency and the phase of the signal should be matched uh, so in coherent modulation when we transmit the uh, signal double sideband suppressed carrier signal at the receiver side we need a, a signal that is synchronized with the incoming carrier and which is not easy to achieve in practice it means that to decode this signal we also need to generate a separate signal cos omega ct at the receiver side and that cos omega ct frequency must match with the mt cos omega ct but in practical due to modulated signal have traveled hundreds of miles and could have suffered unknown frequency shift so it is not very much easy to generate the accurate frequency signal omega c at the receiver side so this motivates us to use the amplitude modulation so let's move forward how it works so alternative to coherent demodulator is for the transmitter to send a cos omega ct along with the modulated signal mt cos omega ct so in uh, amplitude modulation uh, we also shift independent carrier this is a cos omega ct beside mt cos omega ct in double sideband suppressed carrier so in double sideband suppressed carrier we only transmit this part but in amplitude modulation we shift both like one this one and the second one this so we need to send these two signals as a result there will be no need to generate a carrier at the receiver side so in this way the receiver side will be more simple because we don't need to generate a separate carrier to decode this signal however transmitter will need to transmit as at a much higher power which makes it more costly as a trade off but what will be the drawbacks of using this scheme like trans uh, independently transmitting this carrier it is obvious that if we will send the extra information we need a more power 
So it means that in AM modulation, we need extra power to transmit this second part, which is a carrier. So which is the trade-off between a cost and more costly as a trade-off. So this option is obvious choice in broadcasting because of desirable trade-off. So in broadcasting, what is this? Uh, what is the phenomena? Uh, we usually transmit. Uh, transmitter is only one, only one transmitter, but there are multiple, like multiple receivers. So broadcasting, this uh, phenomena is obvious choice because if we have a number of receivers and one transmitter, so in one transmitter, if we uh, use this scheme, like we independently transmit carrier and the modulated signal. So at the receiver side, we don't need to extra circuitry to generate a synchronized or the coherent uh, demodulation message. So in this way, there will be the power increase will be compensated at the less cost of the receiver. Whereas in point-to-point -point communication, it means point-to-point -point means that one transmitter and the one receiver. In this type of communication, there is one transmitter for every receiver and substantial complexity in the receiver system can be justified if the cost is offset by the left representative transmitter. It means that in this case, double side band to press carrier is a preferable choice because in this, as there is only one transmitter and one receiver, so receiver cost uh, can be justifiable as compared to the expensive transmitter. Okay, let's look at the mathematical expression, how mathematical expression looks like for the AM modulation. So this is our AM modulation. This is the independent carrier which we are transmitting and this carrier has an amplitude A and this is our modulated signal which we are transmitting. MT is the message and this is the after modulation with the cross omega CT. This is our modulated signal and this is our carrier. So when we combine, there is a cross omega CT, combine, take outside, so A plus MT. And in, this is what the time domain signal and time domain signal. And when you, how the spectrum or the frequency domain signal looks like. So take, we need to take the Fourier transform. So every one of you have an idea that the Fourier transform of the omega, cos omega ct is the impulse per function, right? Cos omega ct is the impulse. So this is the Fourier transform. Uh, uh, sorry, not this one. Wait, please. So this is the Fourier transform of that impulse cost function, right? This part is the Fourier. So A cos omega CT, so A by 2 delta F plus FC delta F minus MT. So it is impulse. And this combined MT cos omega CT, so cos omega CT into MT, the Fourier transform is this thing, right? Half M F plus FC plus M F minus FC. M is the message signal and it is shifted to the frequency fc and f plus fc. So in frequency domain, it looks like half for the modulated signal and the independent carrier term. So this is the frequency signal, right? So now comparing the amplitude modulated signal with the double sideband suppressed carrier signal is equal to mt cos omega ct. Am is signal is identical to the double side band suppressed carrier with A plus MT as the modulating signal instead of MT. So if we compare with the double side band suppressed carrier, in double side band suppressed carrier we only have the MT cos omega CT but in uh, amplitude modulated signal we have A plus MT as the modulating signal. Right? So to sketch phi AMT we sketch the envelope so add the mirror image minus of this and fill in the gap between the channel side of carrier frequency. It will be shown on the next slide. The size of A, it means size of A means the size of the carrier which we are independently transmitting, carrier amplitude affects the time domain envelope of the modulated carrier. How it affects? Let's see. So this is the envelope A plus MT. So uh, usually what we do, uh, if we have a message signal, 
this way, right? This is our message signal, and we would like to transmit on the carrier. Right? This is our carrier signal. Pass from Mega City. So what we do to generate this one? For example, we will plot this message, right, over here positive side and the negative side as well as discussed in the last slide and then we will fill the gap between them with the carrier in this way right in this way. so this how this signal is made of a plus mt so in the previous case the only envelope was the mt but here there is a role of a as well a plus mt so this is the role so in this case if you See that if a value is higher, then this will not cross the zero value, right? If a value is higher, then the empty with a specific number, which we will discuss later on, but this will not touch the zero axis. This one, right? And in this case, if a is higher, look at this, this is going down, right? Okay. This is going down in this square right under the axis and similarly for the negative this part so in this way this part will be cancelled out so we need to carefully select this a which has a clear role in the amplitude modulation so there is an example so how the selection of a affect selection of a means how the amplitude of the cost signal affects the modulation in figure B, for example, this one, this is figure B, A is large enough to ensure that A plus MT is greater or equal to 0. So, what is the condition of selection of A to have a proper modulation? A plus MT, like the MT is your previous modulated signal magnitude and this is the independent carrier magnitude. So, combination of these two must be greater or equal to 0. So, it means always non-negative. This one is the case. This was your A. I will this. This is here to here is the A. Right? This is A. So A is the DC value. It will just shift your axis to this point. Right? And then A plus MT, your message signal will start from here and goes here. But it's greater than zero. It is not crossing this axis. Right? So in this case, it's always negative. And other case in figure C, the second case, A is not large enough to satisfy the previous condition. But if A plus MT should be greater or equal to 0. This is the condition which must be satisfied to correctly record the signal in amplitude modulation. So if you look at this, this A is less. So the signal is crossing the negative part here. So what it will result? It will result in a degradation of the signal. In the first case, the envelope has the same shape as MT although riding on the direct current of magnitude wave. In this case, MT has a similar shape, but it's going upward. DC current is, means its reference is shape. Whereas in the second case, envelope shape differs from the shape of MT because the negative part is rectified. This portion will be rectified, so it means that the message signal shape will be changed. So desired signal M of T can be detected by detecting the envelope in the first case. And a plus mt is greater than 0. So, uh, in the previous slide, we have seen that a plus mt is greater than 0, then, then we can detect the signal correctly by using the envelope detection. What is envelope detection? In simple, we can say that uh, the signal which is riding, carrier which is riding, signal which is riding on the carrier, and this signal is called the envelope. Your message signal is called envelope of the signal. So, how this envelope detection works, we will see in the later and later videos. <clears throat> so, in this case, desired signal can be detected by detecting envelope in the first case when A plus MT is greater than zero. However, it is not possible in the second case. So, in the second case, when it is less than zero, it is not possible. Envelope detection is simple and inexpensive operation that does not require the generation of a local carrier at the receiver and will be studied further later. So, why is the envelope detection is a good and 
simple or inexpensive operation because it doesn't require local carrier. Local carrier means the carrier generation at the receiver side for detecting the message signal. So in relay of AM has the information about MFT only if AM signal satisfied the condition list for all T, right? So this is similar an example. Consider a ET pass omega CT. ET is same as A plus MT, like this one, right? If AT varies slowly in comparison with the sinusoidal carrier, then envelope of AT is ET amplitude, hence ET if replaced A plus MT greater than zero. So envelope of I AMT is A plus MT, this one equals to A plus MT. So there is a condition of successfully using the envelope detection. For envelope detection to properly detect message, these conditions need to be met. So these are two conditions you must remember to have a successful implementation of the envelope detection for signal decoding. The carrier frequency should be greater greater than the bandwidth of the message signal. This is your original message signal and you are transmitting on some carrier, this one for example this is your carrier and its frequency should be greater than the bandwidth of, this is your signal, bandwidth of a signal. This is first condition and other condition is that A plus MT as you already discussed should be greater than B. The conclusion is verified from here. If we have A plus MT greater than zero, we can correctly decode. And if A plus MT is less than zero, we will have an overlap and this portion will be rectified. And we can't decode the information correctly. So in D, this is D. A plus MT is the envelope and MT can be recovered. And e, F, e, A, A plus MT is not always positive. It's going to negative side. The envelope is rectified from A plus MT and MT cannot be recovered. So demodulation therefore amounts to simple envelope detection. So we need a envelope detection for demodulating the signal and for demodulation is only possible if these two conditions are satisfied. So the condition of envelope detection is base one sonality. So if MT is greater than zero, A then A is zero already satisfied the condition above as a result. You don't need to add any carrier because the envelope is this one. So double sideband suppressed carrier signal can be detected by envelope detection as well. If we assume that MT is not greater than or equal to zero for RT, so MT is with zero offset. So there can be another case. Let MT, this is your peak value, positive peak, and this is your negative peak. Be the maximum and minimum values MT respectively then MT should be greater or equal to minus MT. What does it mean? Your message signal should be always greater than minus P, right? Minus P this one, right? Hence the condition of relative detection is A is greater than, if you move A plus MT is greater than zero, or A minus A should be greater than minus minimum is equal to MT. In general, we write is a MT. The minimum carrier amplitude required for the viability of neural detection is MT. So that's for today's lecture. I would like to thank you for listening this lecture. And for question answer, there will be a separate session that the date and the time of the session will be communicated later on. Thank you.